This video and all the projects within it were made possible by our viewers. We made sure that we had all the materials. To make sure we're not stranded in the middle of the ICW without a holding tank and a windlass. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We were on the Indian River, a portion of the ICW where many sailboat gear shops and small marinas can be found. We wanted to haul out, but before we could think about dropping $1,200 to repaint our bottom, we would now have to get some even more essential projects done. We heard from other cruisers about a pretty extensive boat shop near Fort Pierce, Florida. We just had to pull up the anchor and leave. Hi, little guy. He's gonna, he's gonna breed. Oh, it's kind of small, that one. Yeah. It's funny, I recognize it was a manatee just by the swim pattern, so yeah, I was like... Gentle. Yeah, gentle. It looks right. like it's tail. Our issue, of course, is now that the windlass is, is non-functional. It's just used to hold the chain. We are pulling up by hand, and then when we get to the point where the anchor is right here, we don't have enough force to get the last... Well, I don't. Robbie can sometimes get it up. It's full of mud. It's really heavy. We have a big anchor and lots of chain. But that also means it's very difficult to pull up. We were thankful to be at a shallow and calm anchorage where it was still possible for Robbie to pull up the anchor and chain out of the water. But we felt that any deeper and we may not have been able to retrieve our ground tackle at all. We're stuck again. We've grounded ourselves again on almost the same portion of the ICW as last time. We were trying to anchor close to the marine liquidator store and we, we just got too close. <laughs> we flew too close to the sun and grounded ourselves with, we thought we had a, a meter and about 20 centimeters. It's low tide and we don't have that extra water. We're grounded at exactly one meter, waiting for the tide to come up. Robbie's currently yanking on the chain with the broken windlass. I think it's better to wait for the tide to come up and to be in the dark than it is to pull our anchor. forward, and as you get, start getting on the keel, which starts about here, See, it's a difference, and then you go forward of the boat in here, it's a little bit less. And then when you go forward of the boat, there is the thing is under the thing is under, I mean, underneath the water there, okay. so there is already oh, yeah. that much more. A few moments later, we got out of the muck and anchored in about six more inches of water. Like very dirty and industrial around here. There's like black smoke there, black smoke on that side. Construction <laughs> growing into the marina. We have we would come in here, we gotta watch out for this nicely sideways sunken vessel. We asked the two boatyards here what they wanted for about less than a week on the hard, but we were not loving our options. A very reasonable walk from the boatyard, we stopped in at Marine Liquidators. They have, very importantly, they have a cannon. They had everything we had been looking for for years in Mexico in terms of materials. Shafts, shafts with couplers on it, cutlass bearings, <laughs> stuffing boxes. We've got the pile of broken windlasses. I'm trying to look for parts of our windlass. However, no parts for our broken windlass. We're not finding it. We spent $200 today on pipe. This was the best prices we could find to get wastewater pipe, clamps, through deck fitting, through hole for the air vent. We needed a pipe to go into this used tank so that it, it goes to the bottom for pump out. We needed a tank that had a hole at the bottom. We have the fittings at the top for the in waste and the out waste air vent. 
We didn't pay $95 for this. We paid... Yeah, 40 It's got a hole in it, which then we also need to repair with some fiberglass. We wanted to place the wastewater tank in such a way that it wouldn't be so obtrusive. But alas, an awkward fit was what we got for cheap. Built-in tabs made it easy to bolt down, and then it was just a matter of running the hoses. We had to place the tube that we found into the tank so that it could be pumped out from the deck. Now, instead of the head leading directly into the ocean, the toilet bowl now pumps into the tank. The tank can be emptied by pumping it out through the deck or downwards through the magic of gravity. Now we're going to have a fucking shit explosion. That's not true. It's just water. <laughs> it's not that. It's just water. It's just seawater. So you're trying to get it off. We managed to get it on very tight at the bottom there. Is there water coming out? It will. So much fun. Uh huh. No more party party for us. Yeah, I know. A real head taking shape here. It's a smaller space than was intended on this boat, but for us, we rather have a storage space in here that we use for other than just sitting on the throne. And then this toilet is going to be moved in there. And I'm going to have this can be turned into fridge, storage, shelves. We did need to make some holes in our deck, unfortunately. Get your snoot out of the fiberglass. Some might disagree with the placement of our air vent. However, this is the exact place where Choco often likes to take a crap, and I have to clean hair often anyways. We were almost ready to throw out our shitty porta potty. It's not the prettiest thing. We just had to seal everything up with 5200 sealant. The tank is fully installed now. It is usable completely. We can open the valves at sea and let the waste out or pump out at the dock and then there's an air vent that goes out. It's a little bit in the way. It's not the exact dimensions that we wanted. We're going to work with this. It was the cheapest solution. And then the plan is to eventually, when we haul out the boat next, to put the through hulls to move them over here. And with the new valves down here, it means that the tank empties more directly. And then it also means that the small area behind me becomes a better storage space. And then it was soon time to test out the new system at a nearby city marina. You can close it, wait a second, I'll give it like a little shake, and then you can put it up and twist it up. Yeah, I'll give it a quick rinse. To celebrate our newfound compliance with the law, we visited the nearby Spoil Islands. Marinated pork belly to put on that. No running off into the oblivion of the island choco. Don't go any deeper because there's probably some crocodiles. <laughs> Good boy. The nice thing about the ICW is the free miles with very little strain. Yeah, once in a while the wind is the right angle to get free miles. Super tight, super, no much space, and all the boats are out together. We were going to stay on a mooring for a few days. Robbie had to fly off for a job, and I was not ready to be alone with the dog on a vessel that I could not lift the anchor on my own in an emergency. The mooring field was extremely busy. They need to raft up two, sometimes three boats on moorings to accommodate everyone. We managed to spot an abandoned vessel to tie to. We tied to her and then made sure that the masts were not overlapping. So you gotta be prepared to get to know your neighbor here. In our case, we took a mooring with a boat 
that nobody's on board. It's, it's basically abandoned. That works well for us because we have the dog. You don't want to bother your neighbor with some, something like a dog barking or whining, and whining like our dog, so. You might have an accidental collision with a manatee by rowing at two knots. Warm. Warm. Yeah, water coming in. Warm water. This one's living in the sail. Our forward sail. And then when we open the sail, it's gonna go wee. Aww, but he's cute. No, it's not for you, Choco. The lizard is not for you. Robbie left me there with Choco to go for daily walks to the immense dog park where he made lots of boyfriends learning how to be sociable with other dogs. I don't have treats for you. The free bus that runs around Vero Beach was one of the best features of this community. And the community of cruisers is alive and well every morning at 8.15. They have uh, guitar, harmonica, juice harp, or if they just like to hum, bring that along. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Our neighbors aboard Rhiannon helped us to get upwind, as well as let me upload a video using their Starlink internet. Last video, you saw how we broke the manual function on our 12-volt low friends windlass. The parts that we would need replaced would be a significant cost to us. And unless we wanted to go ahead and wear down the parts that we had already broken all over again, we would also need to get the electrical components functioning to use the windlass properly. Hooking up the 1500 watt windlass would mean growing our battery bank, getting much more wiring, and of course buying the replacement parts that we broke. So we both decided that we wanted to sell the Tigris for parts and to get a fully manual windlass. Because of our friend Sean and dropped off to us by another friend, Carrie, we had a new Lofrans Royale in a matter of days. Inside the Lofrans Royale, the spring is much larger and robust, meant for full-time use, unlike the Lofrans Tigris, which is meant to use in the manual option only as backup. We would need to use the windlass footprint template built into the packaging because the holes on the deck would not be in the exact same spot as our old windlass. We wish the packaging was a little more environmentally friendly, but the brand new windlass was looking pretty shiny and spiffy. It's surprisingly small, huh? The function is very straightforward and simple. Realistically, we only needed to bolt it onto the deck. Oof, tight. We're gonna probably put this gypsy on here and hopefully they correspond because yes, they exactly, are the same. Yeah, exactly the same. And that way we can not use up this brand new nice gypsy on very rusty shitty ass chain. Yeah, basically the new low fronts have an have a motor that attached there. This is the body of a new low fronts. This is the difference between th 20 oh, 30 years. Still make this one. But then also make the one if you want to have the engine underneath. It will look like this, but with the engines underneath. To change the gypsy, we would simply need to unscrew the wing nut. We might have paid like just for this, 100 bucks. And then we would need to unscrew the stripper before sliding off the gypsy on both windlasses. No, I was gonna put some tap child in there. Wiping off and greasing the gypsy before using on our new windlass was a good idea to keep the metals from wearing out.
and a little Tef gel to avoid corrosion as well. Before removing the old windlass, we tied off the chain because we're currently at anchor, of course, and then it was just a matter of getting the very well embedded bolts out. The sealant we used on the bottom of the old windlass was holding it down to the deck pretty securely. We needed to use a hammer, wooden wedges. This is what it it looks like when we install something and then we try to take it off. Our metal wedge kit and the jib halyard to pry that windlass off the deck. Yikes! That was on there good, hey? And it wasn't even like we used a ton of <laughs> sealant. <laughs> no, it's not even a ton of sealant, you're right. Yeah, like it, it would be best to buy sealant, right? We could also just put it on. At first, we would get the Low Franz Royale a dry fit. and remove the entire remaining length of chain from the old Tigris. While the Tigris has a hole to feed the chain through, the new Royale does not. That can be both a benefit and a disadvantage depending on your setup. In our case, it allowed us to position the new windlass more easily without having to worry about where new holes would be in the deck. And just like that, our lives had changed again dramatically for the better. With the new manual windlass, we would have no problem pulling up and letting out anchor chain, including the bridle for the chain as well. I would put the snubber on for night. Yeah. The only thing that was left to do was to modify and then to make new G10 backing plates, as well as add sealant so that it would be bolted down permanently. It's like waiting for me to feed it something. Epoxied all the four old holes. I'm just gonna leave this hole for the electrical wires to go through, because why not? And then this one's available for parts. That's not working anymore. And, and that's not working anymore. And generally clean up the area for the new windlass. You want to put washers at the top to go into the windlass at the top here because they come with plastic washers, but those crack. 5200 is not required, but that's what we have. You really can't have it leaking. These kinds of jobs on the boat really highlight the need for working as a team. Okay, and then a little bit of soapy water to smooth out the sealant. Now we were truly enjoying our new windlass. Now we need $1,200 to $2,600 for new chain. We also enjoyed the numerous SpaceX launches visible on clear nights here on the Space Coast. <laughs>